2023 Lantra end line weight. Can't be too much, right? What does this say? Curb weight. Oh my goodness! 3,020 pounds? What? Man, these cars are getting fat. No, that can't be right. Hold on, let me see something here. Hyundai, let's see. Official website. Hyundai Elantra. Dimensions and weights. Curb weight. 2,725 to 2,868 pounds. Okay, that's more or less where I thought we would be, right? I mean, it's coming from Hyundai. It's got to be correct. 2,800 pounds? Hey, that doesn't seem too bad. Uh, except the car doesn't feel like it weighs 2,800 pounds. Doesn't handle like a 2,800 pound car. It handles like a 3,000 pound car. So unfortunately, it seems like the information provided on this car is a little conflicting. Hyundai says it weighs anywhere from 2,700 to 2,800 pounds. A very general Google search shows just over 3,000 pounds. But what is it? I mean, how can you not trust what the manufacturer says? Clear and day, straight from the people who make the car, they can't be lying. So I really hope that's what the weight of the car is. But because I have really bad trust issues, I've decided to go and weigh the car myself. Did this in the past with the Mustang, went to a truck scale, and now I know what you're saying, these aren't super highly accurate, you know, race weight scales, but those truck scales are far accurate enough to do what I needed to do. It's not gonna be too far off. It's either gonna be 2,800 and some pounds or it's gonna be 3,000 and some pounds. It's not gonna be 200 pounds difference. So by taking the car, to a truck scale and weighing it. I'm gonna see what the real world weight of this car is with me in it. And this is also full weight with a full tank of gas for worst case scenario, because I can always subtract from there once I get the full weight of this car stock. So that's what I'm doing in this video. I'm gonna go ahead, take the car to a truck scale, see what the dang thing weighs and find out once and for all what the real number is because the information, as you can see, is very conflicting and that drives me nuts. Anywho, let's go ahead, let's get on the road, head to a truck scale. I'm gonna use the same one I used last time, you know, just for consistency purposes. And I'm gonna stop at the station, the, the gas station at that facility and top off right before I weigh the car so it is full weight and we'll get a real world result on what the actual weight is. So let's head there, see how it goes. <laughs> So as you can see here, I'm at the gas station. I have to narrate this because in true GoPro fashion, it decided not to record the audio. But pulling up on the scale here, kind of at the center of the car onto the scale, I need to make sure I'm between both those plates. And then... Holy shrimp! Oh my God. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit more about this. All right, I'm back home now. Uh, let's take a look at these numbers closely. I'm, I'm almost... I mean, I'm not in disbelief, but I I don't know. I was really hoping the numbers I was seeing was more favorable on the lighter side of things, but that's not my reality. My reality is that this car weighs with me in it 3,280 pounds. So really, I'm only 200 pounds, so the car weighs 3,080 pounds. That's exactly what Google said it weighs. The crappier part of all things, I mean, it is a front wheel drive car, so the weight bias is favorable for a front wheel drive car, but not overall a good weight bias in terms of uh, overall handling. The front axle carries 1,960 pounds, and then the rear of the car has 1,320 pounds, and you get a weight distribution of pretty much a 60-40. Yeah, that's, that's horrible. The Mustang was 30, what, what was that? Actually, I still have it here with the uh, scale app. Let me see what the Mustang was. Okay, the Mustang was 3,860 pounds with me in it, so really it was 3,000 660 pounds and it had like a 53 percent weight distribution leagues better than 60 40 Eesh. this car being front wheel drive it is important to have that extra weight over the drive tires rear wheel drive you want more of the weight on the rear so but overall no matter what a 50 50 car is going to handle theoretically the best not to say that's 100 true but in theory yes oh, it just sucks i can't believe it weighs over 3,000 pounds so let's have some fun math here the fuel tank size in this car is 12.4 gallon capacity we're going to divide that by four 
that's 3.1. So then we're going to take our 12.4, we're going to subtract 3.1, and we're going to get 9.3. So if we run a quarter tank of gas, we will run 9.3 gallons less of fuel, and 9.3 gallons at about 6 pounds per gallon for gasoline will save us 55.8 pounds of weight. So right there is 55 pounds that can be saved just by running a quarter tank of gas. So there's also a spare tire in the car. I don't know how much it weighs. Suppose I could weigh that. Maybe I should weigh that. All right, let's get down in here and pull this out. Oh my God. Holy crap, I didn't realize this thing weighs so much. Oh, whoa, okay. This just like separated into multiple pieces. And this is got like a vinyl or rubber backing to it. So yeah, I'm gonna weigh that too. I didn't realize that weighs so much. Oh, you can flip that over. That's nice. I didn't know that about this car. Interesting. But yeah, you got a spare tire in here and this is all additional weight. Oh my God, and your jack kit, this has weight to it too. I mean, this is probably only 50 pounds right here that easily is removable. the spare tire okay so 25 pounds right here just for the spare tire what about the jack kit this has definitely got some weight to it probably around 10 pounds no oh, maybe not so much six pounds okay but between the spare tire and the jack that's 31 pounds and i'm telling you this stuff right here probably has another six pounds easy Holy crap, 10 pounds. Wow, I told you these were heavy. So what's that in minutes? I can easily remove 96.8 pounds, almost 100 pounds just by running a quarter tank of fuel and this stuff out of the trunk I can save. So that's that's usually good for one tenth right there. So just by removing that stuff, then it would put this car under 3,000 pounds, which is okay. I can live with that, I suppose. I was just really hoping it was a lot less under 3,000. Sadly, there's really nothing else you can do to easily remove weight without sacrificing drivability and livability. Uh, well, you know, I'm not going through the trouble of removing any seats or anything. So other than replacing certain panels with lighter material. But as I said, I was really hoping what I was reading uh, would have been what it was. I don't know where those numbers for Hyundai come from. I just have a hard time believing they found a way to reduce that much weight from the new car, especially when the redesigned front end looks like it's wider and it has more material going on. You think it would actually have gained weight. I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. At least that gets that out of the way. That's what this car weighs full weight and quick weight reduction. You know, I can trim out about 100 pounds, no problem. So my race weight setup will be with all the trunk stuff removed when I really want to get some good times. But now that actually gives me a good reference. If I save about 100 pounds, I theoretically save about a tenth overall on all of my times, but there's only one way to really find out and that's to run the car with less weight and see, uh, see where it is compared to my baseline numbers. Of course, that's going to be a whole nother video. And uh, until that video is Probably gonna wrap it up here for this video. And if you liked the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and share it with everyone you know. If you haven't already and you wanna see more content like this, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, give a look out for the next Cars Creative video.